this is our fourth talk of the day. So Brian is going to chat to everybody about uh, big ways and um, how to stay on them, how to not mess it up. So over, over to you, Brian. Uh, thank you, Emily. Um, hi, I'm Brian Cumming. Um, I'm honoured to have been asked today to talk uh, by Skylab Langer, the world's first Zugi, although I do wish I was in one room with you guys all at the expo talking instead. I'm here to talk about big way progression, as you can tell from the screen, how to get on big ways and how to stay on them. Um, it's not a specific big way skills. It's not how to do big way. It's something that doesn't really get talked about so much. And it's how to get on big ways, how to get on those super large formations, how the national records, the world records, how to open the door and get yourself that dream invite, how to get noticed, accepted and invited. Um, I'm going to fall back on a few examples. Uh, mainly, I'm going to use the Brit 200 um, dream idea project that I'm working on. Brit 100 was at Skydive Langer in 1999. Um, that's well over 20 years ago. Um, it's time to go big. Um, it's been a dream of mine for well over a decade now. And I think I know how to make it happen. I've got a six year plan up here. Um, I just need 200 good skydivers. So if you're listening to this and you're still doing AFF or you haven't even started your AFF yet, you've still got time to get yourself ready. The door is open. Uh, before we start, um, some of my slides have blue on them and some of my language is also gonna be a bit blue. So if you've got small kids in the room, you might wanna stick in some headphones or you might want to watch the catch-up recording on the Skydive Langer YouTube channel or the Skydive Langer website when they're uploaded later on. Um, also, I can't let this opportunity pass without a cheeky plug for Radio Skydive UK. It's my podcast. Um, it's aimed at the UK and European market. Um, it is also apparently a game in this presentation and we're a podcast and we are some of the most interested. We interview some of the most interesting skydivers in the world. Uh, meet myself along with Craig Fox and, and a couple of other regular guests. Check it out wherever you get your audio from. 77, 77 episodes, over 110,000 downloads already. They can't all be wrong, can they? Um, anyway, <clears throat> we are going to be looking at... Cool. Cool. Um, Skydiving Foundations, what, does it, what do you need to be to be a good skydiver? Big way skydiving foundations, what do you need to be a good big way skydiver? <clears throat> Understanding the different styles of big way events, where do you need to go? Thinking like an organizer, try and get in our head so you can understand what we're thinking and some of our decisions, how to stay on big ways. We don't really, this doesn't really get talked about. And then there's an opportunity for questions at the end. If you wanna stick your questions in the chat, um, I'll try and scan them. And if I can add them into the narrative, I will. Otherwise, if your question's in the chat, I'll be the first one to get picked on at the end. Cool. Good skydivers are four things, okay? So quick credit to Tom Shorten for the photo here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you need to be two things physical. You need to be physically fit to a point and you need to be physically coordinated um, and then there's two mental things. You need to be, um, you need to be knowledgeable, you need to know the stuff, and you need to have the right attitude. I used to say mentally switched on to cover that, but having thought about it this past week, I think you can actually split it out. So the three of those things, the top things, fit, coordinated, knowledgeable, that gives you your skill, and then attitude is how you use it. <laughs> Who's talking? Mute yourself. Thank you. <laughs> um, actually, guys, I might just um, go through and mute everybody. Or Emily, can you do that for me, but not me? Just don't want to get a bit of feedback. Cool. Thank you very much. So what do you need to get to be sufficiently physically fit? Um, you don't need to go overboard. Functional fitness is great. Do the jumps. You'll get the strength in the right areas. Do the packing. Do the tunnel. You'll get fit where you need to be fit um, from doing our sport. Outside of our sport, no one needs to be doing more than a 5K run. You know, don't go overboard here. Flexibility will help. I think most people know what they could do to get fit. You know, even if it's just like PE with Joe Wicks in the morning three times a week, that's plenty. Physically coordinated. You need to know about the location of your limbs and the ability to self-correct. Um, uh -huh. <clears throat> I forgot this bit. So I used to track really, really badly. Um, I feel massively unprepared. Excuse me, hold on a second. 
got a little mannequin thing here. I'm just going to try and get him off the stand for you guys. I can't get him off the stand. Um, I was reading through this last night and I bought this yesterday. So I used to track. And when I was tracking, I was tracking. I had my legs bent up. And I used to track with my arms down. And I have no idea why I used to track in this position. It was utterly bonkers. <clears throat> um, and what I did was I got a free fly coach come alongside me track. I said, I want to go flat. I want to go far. And we got down, watched the video. And it was just like, dude, just straighten your legs and bring your arms up. Um, next job we went up. Um, you fix your coordination of the limbs. I locked out my knees. I put my arms alongside the body. And we went a lot further, a lot flatter, a lot faster. And we landed quite a long way off, actually. Um, you need to know where your limbs are and what you're doing throughout your skydive. People who learn dance or gymnastics at school tend to be better coordinated than people who did rugby and football and stuff like that. It's been trained into them. Now, functional fitness, again, is great. Do loads of jumps and loads of tunnel and your coordination is bound to improve. It's inevitable. But if you're looking to train outside of skydiving to save your budget, then there's loads of coordination sports that you can pick up. You could do yoga, you could do dance, any variety of dance. It doesn't matter, Pilates, gymnastics, trampolining, martial arts, uh, high board diving, Tai Chi, anything like that sort of thing. Climbing's okay. And then so many classes you can do in any of those things all at home on YouTube um, and it's all free. Moving on to the mental side of things. For me, this is the most important, the knowledge and the attitude. Um, how do you get the knowledge? Well, there's articles. Guy Life Mag has got so many articles going back over the years. Uh, when I went on my first skills camp in America, uh, I, I went through, I found every single article there was. I photocopied them all, I took them on the airplane and I read them on the airplane with me. Um, there are loads of internet articles. There's skills camps. There's go and listen to podcasts. Um, <laughs> read my blog. I know I haven't written it yet, but I will, I promise, in the next few months. Um, online classes, ask at the drop zone, ask other skydivers, organizers, or people who are on the jumps you want to be on especially if you're jumping with them, you know, that day, ask them what they're doing, how they're doing it, what technique they use. Uh, maybe ask them if they could be your mentor for that weekend or for, you know, longer term. Um, I always feel a bit weird when I'm asking that sort of question, but don't be shy. I mean, we jump out of planes for fun. We shouldn't feel weird asking somebody for a bit of advice, you know, crack on. So um, then you need to understand what knowledge you need you need so you need to understand preparation um what are you going to what equipment are you going to use uh how much lead are you going to take are you going to take a baggy t-shirt to that event you need to know about exits you need to know about getting to the formation you need to know about how to pause and just check the formation is okay before you dock on it once you're docked on it you need to know about being in the formation you need to know about getting away from the formation you need to know about canopy flight rules in traffic how to be predictable and you need to know all the things you shouldn't do um, attitude, attitude. It's your attitude. It's your mindset. How do you get this? I'm not sure to be honest. Um, when are you confident? What gives you confidence? Is it practice? Is it knowledge? Is it understanding? Is it visualizing? Is it standing in front of the mirror and telling yourself you're a tiger? Whatever works for you, do it. It's basically it's believing in yourself. It's your desire to do better, to learn more. Um, to take responsibility, the ability to make mistakes and immediately forget about them without beating yourself up because you've only got um, part of a skydive left and you want to do the best you can in that bit. You know, a skydive is only 60 seconds long. If you've made a mistake, forget about it. Do the best you can on the next 30 seconds of free fall and the next couple of minutes of canopy ride and then work about it. Think through it afterwards. You know, it's the desire to be a hero and not to be a victim of circumstance. Attitude determines the knowledge you gather and the physical aspect is that is, is, is the, how the knowledge is displayed. And has that become skill or do you need more practice? Okay. Good big way skydivers are six things. So photo credit here, Gary Wainwright, this I think is a 217 way although somebody described it as a 219 way to me the other day, so I'm not entirely sure, but I think this is the photo of the 217 way. If you're quick at counting, let me know. So a good big way skydive is six things. Not only are you physically fit, physically coordinated, knowledgeable and with the right attitude, but you're, you have experienced, you are experienced, and you're a team player. 
teamwork summarized don't be a dick um, but don't be neutral either be actively supportive of your teammates the team is only as good as the weakest person and if someone is dehydrated because it's a hot day and they landed far away they had a little walk back and they're rushing to pack spot that get them a drink help them out you know ask yourself challenge yourself what act of kindness could i do today on this big way um on on the ground uh, how many acts of kindness could you do to your the rest of your team you know small stuff like pull-ups bungees and spare closing loops or bigger stuff as well how do you get experience well i had planned to write a list of um, camps happening throughout 2021 uh, for this but right now i'm not entirely sure what's happening i know skydive langer has got loads planned hopefully it all pays off other drop zones will have stuff too in the uk and then maybe 2022 we can start looking abroad as well um, although i do have a camp in may as well um, experience needs to be relevant jumps number of jumps is important but it's not just any old jumps you know you're not going to get better at big way fs if you're doing wing suiting or if you're doing hop and box for your canopy piloting or crew um, they need to be specific and experience if you've got the right experience, it will give you anticipation so you can spot what's about to happen or what might happen and audit before it does happen, or it gives you solutions. So something has gone wrong, but you've got a plan B, what to do, or you've got a plan C. Jumps, tunnel, just do it. Have a goal in mind. You can always learn something consciously or subconsciously. Okay, so tunnel. How much tunnel? Top four way team. So I was listening to Rhythm XP speak previously. Uh, they won the 2019 US Nationals with an average of 26. Uh, they do one hour of tunnel when they're training for every 30 jumps they do. What's your ratio? How many jumps have you got? How much tunnel have you got? Um, you know, do you track your tunnel? Do you have a little logbook for your tunnel? Work it out. If you're doing 120 jumps a year, could you do four hours of tunnel a year? Yeah, you probably could, you know. You can get in the tunnel and do six way for around about 150 pounds for an hour. So suddenly you're looking at, um, you know, not seven jump tickets for an hour, 30, 30 more jump tickets on top of the 120 jump tickets that you already were going to do. It doesn't seem that much compared to how much skill and benefit you'll get from that time in the tunnel. What experiences do you need? You need experience making mistakes. You need experience fixing those mistakes. You need to know when to dock and when to let the formation breathe for just a second or two more before docking. You need enough experience not to rush that decision so that your awareness is up um, and that you don't have tunnel vision. You know, you're not fixated on your part of the formation. You're not looking at your grip just as a big wave's coming through and suddenly you're super low in the formation. Are there jumps where you learn nothing? Perhaps, but only if you aren't paying attention. Um, even the jumps where you learn nothing, you're getting more current, getting more experience under your canopy. And if you are more conscious of the experience, you could be learning a bunch of conscious practice. Sometimes seeing what is possible has an inspiring effect on people. I used to think I was good at tracking, you know, I just talked about getting coaching and how to track until you can't land on the drop zone. Um, and then I went on a hundred way. And I realized how much I still had to learn when people were smoking past me. And then, a handful of years after that, when I thought I was even better at tracking, I was on a 200 way and I was left for dust again. And it's just, how, do, how are these people doing that? You know, you are never as good as you hope you are. Always push yourself. You know, maybe I should, um, maybe we should be getting fly sites or GPS trackers and every jump we do a little bit of tracking, see how far you can get in that four or five seconds. You know, prove yourself, always be practicing. If you're in the tunnel to sig signal the end of your flight at Bedford, there are blue lights. Uh, I fly, you've got orange lights. Uh, you've got 10 or 15 seconds to get out. What do you do? Do you get out straight away? Or do you do a little slow fall and pop up and turn 180 degrees as if you were about to um, leave a formation? Do you booty fly? Do you practice your 360s? Do you roll onto your back and back fly to the door? There's no right answer, but you should be pushing yourself and trying to use as much time as possible. Of course, make sure you get out in your session. Don't steal someone else's precious seconds. In the sky, on a zoo dive, do you practice stopping hard right by the formation? Or you know, you don't plan for it to be a zoo, obviously, but it has potential to be a bit of a zoo. Um, do you practice stopping hard right by the formation? Just off to one side, obviously, don't aim straight at the formation in case you can't stop in time. Um, do you practice getting there first? Do you challenge yourself to get there first? 
Um, do you challenge yourself to take the softest grip possible? It's just your thumb and your forefinger, not actually a big grip. Do you take grips in the right place? Do you practice not overreacting to the mini funnel in front of you? Do you practice your tracking? Are you always pushing yourself to be the best at everything, at everything within that skydive? Can you practice helping make the formation fall faster while the person you're docked on or is docking on you is heavy on your grips? Try and put yourself under pressure so that when you're at an event and the pressure is external, you'll be more confident. Challenge yourself. Say to yourself, like, I have to get to this formation within 10 seconds. Watch the video back on the debrief. Time yourself. Did you make it? Maybe keep track. I don't know. Lots of things. We talked about attitude and it shows up, shows itself here as well. You know, um, try and be a hero. Don't be a victim. Someone docked on you heavy. Suck it up, cupcake. This is big way. You know, protect the base, protect the formation. Don't let that heavy dock start a wave. Be a team player. Um, and the best practice for this is being on the low experience jumps because people are going to dock heavier on you or um, you're going to have to dampen out a wave and make it better. That is great practice. Will you do what it takes to be on the biggest jumps? You know, will you get that experience? How much do you want it? How deep is your commitment? So six things to be a good big way skydiver. You need to be physically fit, physically coordinated, have the right knowledge, have the right attitude, be experienced and be a team player. Uh, clicked off. There we go. Okay, cool. So understanding big way events. Um, you know you need experience, but where are you going to get the experience from? Cool. So um, I've put it down into sort of three groups. Uh, you've got mates, walk up, load organizing with the registration form, skills camps, events, national records, and world records. So I haven't put bookies in there because bookies are a place and a time, uh, and any of the above events, any of these events can be at a boogie at the same time. So the first group, no planning. It's your mates. You know, you're doing a four way, a couple of people rock up, you're doing a six way, a couple more people rock up, it's an eight way, it's a 10 way. Wow, suddenly you're doing a big way. Um, there's no real plan. It just kind of happens. Walk up load organizing. Someone puts out a tannoy and says, who wants to come out and play? Uh, more usually it's known in advance that there's going to be walk up load organizing, but there's no real plan. You don't know who's going to be there. Skydive Langer does walk up load organizing really well. There's generally lots of events throughout the year. If there's more than one plane load, it usually gets split out by um, experience level, but the accuracy in this decision is often a bit sketchy. Um, you have very little information when people have just walked up and said they want to jump to, to very little information to base that decision on and very little time to make it in. The next group down is a little bit of prior planning going on here. So you've got load organizing with a registration form. Some prior planning is happening and the level of the group is known often no definite plan or theme running through the jumps other than just big way. Skills camps, turn up and learn, uh, pretend it's a hundred way, make mistakes. Completions shouldn't be a priority. Uh, no blame, try anything. You don't know where the line is until you've gone over the line. At least there shouldn't be any blame anyway. You've got to try new stuff out. Um, just don't put anyone else at risk and everything will be great. Moving on. Um, I couldn't really think of a proper noun for this style of events, but now we're getting to the stage where there is some kind of selection process. Uh, maybe it's a widely advertised and you have to apply for a slot and provide references, um, or it could just be a direct email invite to uh, people who've previously proven themselves. Um, they don't need to apply because the person that they would put down as a reference is the organizer themselves. Um, note that anyone, many events can have more than one organizer and they often recruit for their sector or their plane. If you don't get into one event, um, into one sector uh, on an event, you can always apply to a different load organizer. Um, try it that way. Now, records and world records. You definitely have to apply here. There's no guarantee of getting on multiple load organizers um, and you'll need strong references. There's likely to be a bench group jumping. And what we mean by bench group is, is, is um, substitutes bench. Um, if a group of substitutes, if you have a bad day jumping, if you're un, or if you're unwell, uh, you might get moved down to the, moved across to the bench group uh, and someone will take your slot. 
you might get switched back again if it was just um, a sickness and you're, and you're well again. Uh, or you might have to wait for someone else to have a bad day before you, you get your chance. Keep doing your best. Hopefully you'll get a second chance. If not, chin up, work hard, at least leave a good impression for the next event. For both national and world records, expect to be doing the same jump over and over again. It can be super frustrating when your sector, your part of the formation builds every time, but there's mistakes going on elsewhere. Deal with it, don't get complacent, focus. Um, I should probably talk about some kind of invitational jumps. Um, these secret kind of jumps that you don't really hear about, and I kind of alluded to them earlier, just apply in advance anyway before you know what they are almost. Even if you haven't heard anything, tell the people that run those kind of events, I saw that event, I saw that video, I heard from my friends, if you do something like that in the future, I'd love to be on it. Maybe send them your skydiving CV, but keep it brief. You know, one page of A4 is absolutely fine. You don't have to send videos of you skydiving as well don't expect don't send a, a dropbox link to four skydives and expect load organizers to watch that nobody has time for that um, people think getting onto big ways is all a secret but when you're ready you'll know where to look um, it is a journey to get to that point though so be preact be be proactive and enjoy the jumps along the way so <clears throat> Aha, how to think like an organizer. There's me thinking, doing a lot of planning. That's a photo by Paul Rimmington, uh, back when haircuts were a thing. Uh, what does a load organizer think? What does a load organizer want? Who are they working for? So this is what I'm looking for in people on jumps that I do. This is a screenshot from um, the October Skydive and Mag. Don't worry, I've got the link. Got the link somewhere, I'm just gonna share that. Um, so I will send the link, you can find it in the mag itself. It was October, 2020. Uh, and it was an article by Paul Moden from about a big way camping Clatterby that I ran the previous year. Come on. There we go. Ah, can I not get to the chat if I'm sharing my screen? Chat, there it is, off the side. There we go. Ah. There we go, shared. <clears throat> cool, okay. Um, so for people who are dialing on their mobile phones, uh, basically we're looking at aircraft and who can't, they, people who are dialing on their mobile phones who can't see the screen. Aircraft, how to line up correctly and exit efficiently or if you're looking at it on a small screen. Speed, diving to the formation in the correct, correct quadrant. Timeliness of getting to the slot at correct time and in order. Awareness, knowing where the slot is, the 4H, the dockability, taking and or presenting grips, awareness of the cross partner. Control, being on a level, having the right grips, general performance while diving and being while docked or docking on the formation, consistency um, and resilience, not getting spooked by the unexpected, being reliable, tracking is the distance covered, deployment of the correct altitude, canopy, flying a predictable pattern, making safe decisions regarding final approach, landing in the designated landing area for your quadrant, on the ground it's being prompt to the debrief, bringing jumpsuit and paying attention to the dirt dive, overall uh, and overall performance from exit to landing. Now, I am not ashamed to say I found this, um, I think it was Skydive Chicago, we're doing some head down big ways, 100, 200 way, way, whatever it is, I forget. And I saw them post up something very similar to this and it was just everything I've been thinking but all in one place, so I pretty much borrowed it. Um, thank you to them for that. You know, that's, that's everything that I'm thinking consciously and subconsciously about who's on my event and what's on my event. So for Brit 200, the first event was going to be an 80 way. Now it's a big responsibility to trust somebody on an 80 way for two reasons. Money um, and risk. So at Paris, Skydive Paris, California, is where we were planning to go in September 2020 before something happened. Um, 
an 80 way, so they use twin otters and sky vans and 80 way is going to be four planes. I know that four planes going to 18 and a half thousand feet with supplemental oxygen is $48 a slot. At least it was in early 2020 anyway, I don't have the current price list. Um, an 80 way plus camera is therefore going to be over $4,000 in jump tickets alone. Plus you've got everyone flights over there, the accommodation, you know, it's, it's a big expense. It's, a, it's at least a $4,000 decision. Do I trust everybody on that formation with $4,000 or don't I? You know, there's 79 people there or 78 people trusting me, the 79th person, and then that last person. Do I trust you? Do you have some evidence in your skydiving CV that proves this? You know, um, if it does go wrong and someone makes a mistake, do I have a reason? Can I defend that decision? Or do I have to turn around to 78 people and say, ah, oh, you know, I thought it'd be fine. You know, how, get that strong CV from working out from different events previously and building it up. Everyone has bad days. It's understandable. Everyone has bad jumps. I've seen people with 20,000 jumps plus go low. Doesn't matter, one jump, own it, move on. Um, no load organizer wants to cut anyone. You know, our skill is getting everyone in the right slot from the start. And that's what a load organizer is proud of. Um, we don't want to be chopping and changing from plan A. That just means our plan A was wrong. Now, in exams, you know, you're driving license theory or um, university exams or A levels or whatever. If you got 70%, it's a pretty good exam result. You're going to get pretty high marks but that's still 30% wrong. Imagine a big way skydive with 30% of the wrong people in it, or even all the right people, but 30% of them are in the wrong slots for their level of skill or their fall rate. It's not gonna go well. You know, slotting needs to be about 95% right. It's just, it's... Um, but if you have, and load organizers love this, if you have experience and the equipment to cope, and, um, experience the skill and the equipment to cope in more than one slot, Load organizers love that. The best skydivers are the first name on the list, but the last name to be slotted because we know we can put you anywhere we want. Amazing. Secondly, um, it's not just the financial side of things. Yes, it's a lot, but it's the actual risk too. It's even greater. The risk in skydiving is small, but the consequence is very large. A lot of muggles uh, get this confused. Uh, and on big way, the risk is multiplied. It's some of the riskiest skydiving you can do. Bluntly, bluntly, I've lost friends on big wave skydives. I've been on big waves where 100 skydivers left the plane to build a formation, but only 99 walked back in. This was a low turn, um, not in this country. Um, you know, maybe the spot was a tiny bit off. Maybe they were tracking from the very first wave. They opened up a long way away. They tried to get back a little bit, just a bit further to save themselves to walk in the dusty, in the dust, and they turned a bit too low. Uh, his family came out to see the group uh, the next day. They joined us at the start of the dirt dive. They wished us well. It's, um, it's sobering. It's, uh, it's hard and it's, it's, I'm not going to stop jumping. I love this stuff, the visuals, the camaraderie. It's amazing. But I make plans on every jump so that sort of thing doesn't happen. You should too. And maybe this is why we're sometimes we're a bit harsh on our load organizers are a bit harsh on our decisions because we don't want to get into a situation like I've just explained. So for a big way, I want a good skydiver with experience, who's a team player, who I have confidence in, or someone I trust has confidence in, you know, whoever's given you a reference. Cool. Thinking like an organizer. Um, People will say that big way is cliquey, big way is full of favoritism. Yes and no, you know, load organizing is exhausting. I was having this conversation with Pete Allen uh, this year and he, at the end of the day when he's load organizing, he just doesn't socialize, he just goes to his hotel room or wherever he's staying and just recharges so the next day he's got enough energy. We're looking for people who can make our life easy. We're looking for people who can make our decisions easy. People who put a smile on our face. This is a photo by Martin Skirbel um, from a couple of years ago when we could jump abroad. Um, is it cliquey if I invite my friends, the people I like jumping with, onto the jumps I want to do? I mean, if you're in that group, probably no. If you're outside that group, probably yes. Um, it's just human nature. And I'm not asking for yes people. I don't want any sycophants. Um, you should always challenge ideas 
when you might have a better solution um, or you're worried about safety, at least on my events anyway. Um, some load organizers might hate that. Me, I don't need to be right. I just want to get it right. On Brick 200, if, all, if everything goes to plan, will it be the 200 best individual skydivers in the UK? No. Will they be the best 200 individual UK skydivers on that drop zone? Maybe. Depends how you judge things. Will they be the best 200 team players in the UK? Probably not, although I'd like to hope so. Um, it'll be a mix. You know, there's different roles within each big way. You know, you need strong people for the base. You need people for the middle of the formation. You need people on the outside of the formation. You need tracking teams. You've got to have a tracking team leader. Everyone has a slight different responsibility and we're looking for different attributes and we're looking to fill them all. So with a nod to standing on the shoulders of giants, um, something I've saw people before is just a little game. Just play this in your head. Imagine you're a load organizer. Imagine you're organizing an 80 way. Let's compare two imaginary skydivers. Who would you take on your skydive? Um, somebody who's got a very um, acceptable 4.8 and they're an okay skydiver or someone who's a little bit light for where you need them, but they are super competent. What about somebody who's got a great fall rate um, versus, and they're okay, versus somebody who's a bit heavy, um, but they're super competent. What about somebody, two people who've got equal skill and experience, but one is mouthy and blames other people, and the other one takes responsibility for their own mistakes. What about two equal divers, to equal in skill and experience, but one's always on their phone at the dirt dive and always on their phone at the debrief. What about, Two equal skydivers, skill and experience, but one helps you unexpectedly the day before. What about two equal skydivers, but one tells you how much they wanted to be on the record? You know, where I'm going with this is we're only human. Load organizers are only human. We make mistakes too, but we also get to see you grow as skydivers. And for me, wow, that's cool. Um, that's a major motivation for me. If you're willing to invest in your skills, then helping you to be the best skydiver you can be is a privilege. Um, just check out the passions in these next two comments. Um, I'm going to read this one out um, for people on their mobile phones. This was an application to the 80 way for Brick 200 in September 2020. Why are you applying? Why should we invite you? I watched Eddie the Eagle and cried with happiness at the end. Then a few moments later, Brian Cummings sent me a picture of a 219 way sequential life goals. I want there to be a lively big way scene for Great Britain, and I also want to be part of the next generation of big way skydivers. It's the best kind of teamwork I've experienced in my life so far, and in 2020, I'm taking lots of steps to ensure that I'll be as ready as I can be for this event. I've signed on to various tunnel sessions, three big way events so far, and a flight one, 101, and 102 canopy piloting course. I'm also going to enter the EFS UK Nationals this year with a four way team. Um, second one, why are you applying? Why should we invite you? Me, 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 please choose me. Who wouldn't jump at the chance to be part of this fantastic opportunity? Wow, just wow. If chosen, I will work my socks off to impress with attitude, work ethic and skills. Um, it's a bit, getting on a big way is a bit like a job interview. Usually it's skill and experience that decisions are made on, but attitude and desire can tip the balance in your favor. Okay, how to stay on big ways. This is the one that no one really talks about it, and it is exasperating for a load organizer. Just because you got there doesn't mean you get to stay there. Um, you can't just do a handful of events a year or a couple of weekends and expect to stay a world-class skydiver or to keep improving. It doesn't work like that with any sport or any skill. You have to stay current. You have to keep doing jumps, which you might think are beneath you. Um, and if you don't, skill fade will bite you. I mentioned earlier you need experience uh, and now you have it, you know, and getting experience got you current and currency is king and it got you onto that invitational big wave then and it was amazing. You made it. But too many people think that once they've made it, they don't want to waste their money on energy on jumps or groups beneath them. Wrong. Skill fade is real and it will bite you. You can learn something on every jump, set yourself a goal, make it happen. Lower experience groups are where you test yourself, challenge yourself. Of course, if you don't challenge yourself and you just fly average, then yeah, that's all you do. Then yeah, you'll be average. So look at yourself. What skills do you need to work on? What skills do you need to be current? What skills can you practice on, the jump, on this jump? Even if it's just a two-way with a buddy, practice a certain skill and then swap roles for the next jump. Okay, let me share this quote with you again. 
this is a WhatsApp message. Um, I was going to do some six way tunnel with a guy. I mentioned to him that some people were doing six way in the group and they'd never done six way before. And he came back to me and he said, I have no problem flying with anyone, to be honest. Once you think they're safe to do six way in the tunnel, I am happy to fly. It's always fun, even with low experienced people. For me, that person is heading right to the top. And then a day later, they come back and they say, I might wear my free fly suit tomorrow for the six way session in the tunnel, if that's okay, just for the extra challenge. This is perfect. Take away the booties. You really have to work on the leg inputs to get the speed. Um, you do then do the same leg input with booties on, you're an even faster skydiver. Push yourself, stretch yourself. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Emily. Appreciate that. Um, you know, what can you do? Can you be, can you work on your fast fall? Can you delay in the draw and then dive down? Can you leave early as a super floater? Can you work on taking the lightest grips possible? Yes, yes, yes. Is it advisable to practice? Or can you just be confident that you can rock up next time you're on an 80 way and perform to the top of your potential? You need to practice. And then people on the way up, uh, people who are progressing. I see people who are doing like an amazing 20 way event. Brilliant, here's a reference, go and do some 40 ways. A year later, having done very few jumps, they're then trying to get on a 40 way. If you apply this mentality to running, you'd get laughed at. Okay, you just did a half marathon, amazing time. Brilliant, crack on, you should do a marathon next year. Step up to do a marathon, but they do no training in, in the meantime. What's that about? You've got to do those 5K runs in the cold, in the rain, in the snow. You've got to do those jumps to get you going. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Um, this was me talking to you about how to get on big weights and stay on them. You need to be a good skydiver. You need to be a good big weight skydiver. You need to understand events. You need to think like an organizer. And then I talked to you about how to stay on big ways. Do we have any questions? Emily, maybe you could chip in. I wasn't following the chat. Sorry, guys. I haven't seen any questions come up. Um, but I guess if anyone does, it might be easier to type it in the chat. And we'll have a quick... Sure. Okay, so I did get a question message to me um, earlier. And it was, how do we slot people? And what we do if we don't really know you or just even as a basic from the event um, i take a ratio of your height in meters and i divide that by your weight in kilograms so the average person most skydivers you know there's a normal distribution there normally you're going to be around about 2.3 on that ratio uh, the very fast fallers are going to be sort of 1.9 1.8 something like that and they're going to want to take a bagging t-shirt with them to that big way event and then the slow fallers the floaty people they're going to be around about two and a half to up to three or so, sometimes even higher than that. And they're going to want to be taking a lot of lead. Uh, someone else has asked, what is the minimum experience you would accept someone on a skills camp? Uh, it depends how big the skills camp is or where it is. Um, I think, oh, crikey. Um, we haven't done a lot of jumping recently. Um, I think my skills camp in May in Clatterby, it's 20 ways. It was... 50 jumps post FS1 and at least two hours of tunnel time, which includes one hour in the prior three months to going and 15 jumps in the prior three months because you don't want to turn up to a skills camp and it's the first jumps of the year. You are not going to be able to perform. Uh, but if you're doing stuff in UK, it just depends on the size. You know, if it's a skills camp and I think the Pumas have got one in March or April, if they're doing one and it's eight ways, you don't need to have quite as many jumps as that uh, or as much tunnel as that. So it's a little bit about currency, which I guess is a bit tricky at the moment with lockdown, but fingers crossed. Basically, a yeah. Time before all these camps start for people to get current again and get jumping with other people. Pretty much. Awesome. Thank you very much, Brian. That was great. I have a link in the chat for the next Zoom talk. So that's going to be Josh, and he's going to be talking a little bit about being a pilot for skydivers and things about on the climb to altitude as well cool emily i just have a quick conclusion um how do you want big ways to stay on them if you weren't paying attention too long didn't read be a good skydiver have experience so you can see where mistakes are and avoid them be a team player um think like a load organizer and stay current um hey guys thank you very much for listening to me i'm brian coming stay safe stay sane stay calm and make good decisions thank you